I'm going to set this right next to you. Okay. So should I wait? Uh, yeah, just can you wait a minute? Yeah, because I seem like I have to open your book. Hey, everybody. If anybody's listening already, we're, um, we got some changes this morning, so... We have some changes, so you're just going to have to be patient with us, okay? Um, We're going to get the word out there. Just give us a moment.
quality over quantity. And, um, you know, a lot of churches want big numbers, and um, big numbers brings in money. <laughs> bring, big numbers bring in, um, uh, what's the word I want? Recognition, let's say. Uh, but what kingdom value does it have? What redemptive value does it have? And here at Thy Kingdom Come World Ministries, um, the, the, the Spirit here is Holy Spirit. We want to be led by the Spirit. We don't want to do works. We don't want to do religion. We don't want to uh, be seen for, hey, look at us, look at what, look at what we're doing. We want there to be redemptive value. We want to make a difference. I want to be a willing vessel that the Holy Spirit works through, that when I meet somebody, it can change their life. I want to be a voice that, that somebody needed to hear. Um, I want to be a voice that I wish that I could have heard at a time when I needed to hear it and there was nobody there. Um, Amen. Yes, the Spirit of God was with me because I was saved as a young child. But could it have made a difference? Could it have made something happen quicker? I don't know. You know, but um, I know that when I'm moved by the Spirit and I do what He tells me, and um, I speak into people's lives. I see the testimony. I see what happens. I see the change. So that's what we want here. We want the quality versus the quantity. And God told me that if we move by the Spirit and not by our own flesh, that the quantity will be there by, by they, will, they will know that, that something's happening here. That um, people will want to come here because they believe they can get healed here. That they know people are getting healed. That they know that they're getting set Jesus free and delivered. Yes. So, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, it, we don't. I personally don't care if there's three people in the room or four people or five people. I care if those people. Hear from God and move by the Spirit. Yes, Lord. So that is the DNA. I call it divine nature of Abba. DNA. That's the DNA that I want to want to go out from this place. Okay? So I wanted that to be said because it was not said on 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 um, on live. It didn't go out. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, the message that I have today is, yeah, can you share that, Mary? <laughs> oh, you did? Yep. Okay. It tagged and everything? Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So the message that I have today <laughs> is not sugar-coated. It doesn't have sprinkles and frosting. <laughs> it's not a Christmas cookie message. It's not um, a warm, fuzzy, feel kind of good message. It's a message the Lord gave me to give to you today. It's a message that cuts flesh away from spirit. It's a message that circumcises the heart. It removes that which doesn't belong and leaves us with that which is holy. We're supposed to go from glory to glory. There's things that don't belong to us. Who knows that surgeries don't feel good and they're painful, but we have to go through them to get to the other side. There must be a house cleaning in the temple. Have you let dust settle? Have the spiders come in? Is the clutter causing disorder? Dust, spiders, and clutter 
is spirits that don't belong in the temple. This is the holy temple. This is where the spirit of God resides in us. Those things, dust, spiders, and clutter, or spirits, demonic spirits, um, don't belong here. With that being said, the title of my message today is, You Know God Loves You, But How Does He Know You Love Him? Let's read a couple scriptures. Romans... We didn't bring Bibles down today, but I'll read them to you. Romans um, 1, 28-32. Since they thought it was foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things they should never have done or should never be done. There's another translation that says he turned them over to their reprobate mind. Look up the word reprobate. He turned them over because they thought it was foolish to listen to him. So he let them go. He does not leave us or forsake us nor abandon us, but he will let us go because he's given us free will. So with that being said, I'm going to say it again. Since they thought it was foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking. He let them do the things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. Okay? That's what it looks like in sin. If we're troubled in our spirit, it's because we are in our own will. So if you turn to John, John 14, 15 through 17, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. When it says the world does not know him, he's speaking to the saints, okay? Those who, who the Spirit of God is with, okay? So there, there is those who don't have the advocate because they're not born again yet. It hasn't been given to them. Okay? So those who love him, those who serve him, if you love him, you will obey him, you will keep his commandments. Then I'm going to go on to 23 26, through 26. And he reiterates himself. And I had to laugh. This is just a side note. But I had to laugh because my daughter says, Why do you repeat yourself, Mom, all the time? Why do you repeat yourself in different words? And I'm like, well, Jesus did. And I think he did that so that, because we hear it differently. And some of us will hear it this way. And some of us will hear it better that way. Because it will resonate with us in different words. So Jesus did repeat himself. He did reiterate. So again, he says in 23, Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, 
That is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. It goes on to um, give God's promises of peace. If you keep reading in that scripture, it's his promises peace for keeping his commandments. Um, some of you may say, well, there's the Ten Commandments. I don't break those Ten Commandments. But I don't believe, I mean, I believe that is, that is one thing he's talking about. But he's talking about so much more. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Uh, he may tell me uh, to buy some shoes. I want you to buy those shoes. And because the Holy Spirit is with me, I'm going to buy those shoes. He might tell him, do not buy those shoes. Keep his commandments. Listen to what he has to say. Because he's still speaking. He still has commandments aside from the Ten Commandments. He speaks to us personally. And he may tell me to do something that he doesn't tell you. Or he tell, might tell me to not do something that he tells you to do. So listen to his voice. And some of you may say, but I don't hear his voice. You know, how do I know? I don't hear his voice like, like you do. Okay, well, if you've been born again, the Holy Spirit is with you. Yes, you may need to exercise that, I call it, spiritual muscle where you start to hear from him more. But I can, I can almost bet or promise you that you clearly hear him when it's an absolute no. Like, no way should I do that. Like, you know that you know you should not do something. Okay? And um, that's, another, that's another teaching. You know, how do I hear from the Holy Spirit? Is that God? You know, that's a whole other teaching. So, but, um, but he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So again, with those scriptures in mind, you know God loves you, but does he know you love him? If you think you are playing with God, that you can just kind of play with it, know that God ain't playing. It's not a game to him. You cannot serve two masters for you saints who are running around the wilderness and thinking you should have the benefits of the promised land. You can't play with God and get the benefits, the blessings, if you're against his will and you're in your own will. You can't walk in the promised land and be separate from his will. There are blessings for being in God's will and there are curses for being in God's will. Did God curse us? Did God curse you? No. It's just the consequence or the result of sin. The word of God says the wages of sin are death. He makes that very clear. And he says we die for a lack of knowledge. And God knows what we know. He knows if we know or not. He knows if we're playing. And like I said, it's not a game to him. It's very serious. Our way leads to death. Remember what is done in the dark will come out into the light. You cannot walk the fence. God doesn't own the fence. The devil does. He doesn't. You can't walk both sides. You cannot serve two masters. God does not own the fence. You cannot walk that fence. Okay? Again, the Word of God says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Moses never reached the promised land. Did you ever think of that? Did you ever really think of that? Did you ever hear that? Moses 
himself did not reach the promised land. Moses didn't obey God when God told him to speak to the rock. He struck the rock instead like he had been told the first time. But God didn't tell him to do that the second time. See what I mean by commandments? You do what God said. God said it one way this time, but he said it another way that time. Moses, the man with great favor with God, the man who saw the glory of God, the man who split the sea, the man who was chosen to lead a nation to freedom, died in the wilderness. He never made it to the promised land. Another man did. His name was Joshua. What did Joshua do that Moses didn't? This great, mighty man that we've talked about throughout history, who split the sea by doing what God told him to do, because he did many things God told him to do, but he didn't make it into the promised land. I personally don't want to be that. I don't want to die in the wilderness like Moses did. I want to walk in the promised land. The word of God says, as it is in heaven, it is here on earth. What does that mean? Living in the promised land is available to you now. All the things that are available. Um, some people think that someday when we get to heaven, it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Then it'll be great. No, it's all available to you now. He's, he's given you abundance now. He's given you power and authority now. That is walking in the promised land. Heaven on earth is now. It dwells in you now. <laughs> you don't have to wait till heaven. To stay in sin is, is an excuse. To stay in the wilderness. Yes, Lord. There's so much more. The promised land, flowing with milk and honey, is available to you right now if you obey God. Okay? Where are you dwelling? Mostly, uh, this sermon is talking to the, to the saints, the people who have already been saved. Okay? But I will also say... Because the question is posed, where are you dwelling? If you're in Egypt, you're separated from God. You've never entered into a relationship. You've never been born again yet. So you are separated. You are in the world. You are in darkness. You don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you yet. You are not... Um, what's, you're not accountable. You're not accountable because... You don't even know yet. Once you know, that's what you're accountable for. Okay? So, again, where are you dwelling? Egypt is, you have not even entered into relationship yet. You are still in sin. You are still in darkness. And that can be taken care of just like that. And we can talk about that in a little bit. The other place is, and this is mostly who I'm speaking to today, is the church, the body of Christ. Are you dwelling in the wilderness, going around in circles, and going around in circles, and going around in circles, and you cannot enter the promised land, and, and, and you'll, you'll stay there, and you'll die there. Or you can enter the promised land, flowing with milk and honey, Life and life abundantly. Um, I'm going to read to you. Uh, God gives me messages. I have a, uh, it's called Omni Science. It's on Facebook if you want to go read them. It's kind of like poems, but it's God given messages that He gives me. And, and they're powerful. You know, it's God speaking through this person. 
Okay, so I put them. I put them to paper, like like the Bible was put to paper. So it's written in time and space. What is God saying? So the message that He told me to to give you, one of the messages He gave me a little over a year ago or something, is two paths. There is a narrow path and there is a very wide path. The narrow path leads to life. The wide path leads to destruction. I said, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Follow me. When you choose to step off the narrow path, to step on the wide path, you separate yourself from me. I cannot walk on the wide path with you. This is God speaking to you. He cannot walk there with you. He has to let you go because he cannot be in darkness. He cannot be in sin. So he has to let you go. So he says, I cannot walk on the wide path with you. These two paths move farther and farther apart from each other. I call to you from the narrow path. You can hear me, but if you do not come back over to the narrow path, you continuously walk down the wide path and move farther and farther from me. The farther you get away from me, the less you can hear my voice, mm -hmm. until eventually you cannot hear me anymore. There are many voices on this wide path that will distract you from my voice. I am right here where I've always been. You can turn back. You can turn and come back and walk with me. I will be here. I will be right. I'm sorry. I will light your way. I will welcome you back and walk with you. Be warned, my child. If you walk too far down the wide path, you will die there and be separated from me forever. Okay, now that is the extreme. I want, because I can, I can hear people already going, no, that ain't true. Okay, that is the extreme, that you would die separated from Christ. But in order for you to do that, you would actually have to get to a point where you renounced your faith. You renounced him. I, mean, you, I do not want to serve you, and you know, I'm done with you. Okay? That would separate you. Um, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. It's the only unforgivable sin. Right. Okay? So, um, alright. I'm going to give you my testimony, and it's okay if we go over, so don't. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to give you my testimony. Okay. I'm going to give you my testimony of exactly what I just spoke about. All this whole thing, um, walking my own path, and um, what that looks like of, of what I just what I just gave you of walking a narrow path, of walking a wide path. So. Um, I was, I was saved and born again when I was very young. Okay, so the Spirit of God was with me. However, I chose to play with God. I, cho I, I believed, this is where lack of knowledge comes in, I believed I could walk that wide path and keep just doing what I want on that wide path. And then all of a sudden, something would happen that was like, oh no, you know, it would be like, I'm in a really bad way. Okay, so now, I'm like, oh God, help me, oh God, help me. Okay, and he would come in and he would help me because it says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So he, he was there, he was there to help me. Okay, so now I'm like, okay, I'm in a good spot again, I'm in a good spot again. Here comes the world. Off I go. Off I go. Onto that wide path again. I did not keep his commands. I did not stay on the narrow path that leads to life. So I kept going there and I kept going there. And I had identity stole from me. Um, on, that, on that path, I was... Um, how do I want to say this? Uh, the devil tried to kill me. The devil tried to kill me. That is true. He did. Over and over and over again, he tried to kill me. And, and so the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. And so over here, he was stealing my identity. He was stealing. 
stealing my purity. He was stealing my uh, joy. He was um, he was stealing my mind. Um, he was stealing my body. I was I had sickness and disease. I was so mentally um, uh, unstable that I was at you know I was suicidal. I uh, I was I was losing you know I was, it was like insanity. It was just insanity because it was it was the wrong path. That path leads to death. That path there's nothing good there. The devil doesn't just take a little bit. You think he's taking a little bit at first. You might, well, that's okay. I can hang on to. I can hang on to this. This ain't heavy. This ain't gonna hurt nobody. Nobody has to know about it, right? But this is poison. Come on now. It's gonna you kill you. Come it's on gonna now. kill you. Give me a bottle of water. This is holy water. It's life. It's going to wash me. It's going to cleanse me. It's going to give me abundant life. And it's going to be the path to righteousness. The path to life. So... I got to a point where I had walked that wide path so long, just like in that God-given message, I had walked it so long and so far that I was not responding to God's voice anymore. And He was leaving me to my reprobate mind. I was lost. And I got to a point where death was staring me in the face. Because like I said, the devil doesn't take an inch. If you give him an inch, he takes a mile. So I was staring death in the face. And and I, I can tell you, if you've never gotten to that point, I, I thought I was going to die there. And I didn't know what I didn't know at that time, okay? I believed. That I had gone so far away from God that He wasn't going to take me back. Okay? That's not true. That's not true. But I can tell you this and I can't explain it to you, but I can tell you, you never, ever, ever want to be in that place. That you're so separated from God that you cannot hear His voice. I can't explain to you what that's like. But to die separated um, is hell. That is hell. And I was living in hell on earth. Okay? So, that's the two paths. And I walked it. So, I called upon the name of the Lord. And I was saved. And I never, ever, ever wanted to return to that. So, I started keeping his commands. I started finding out who he was and what he wanted of me. What he looked like. What he sounded like. What he does. How he moves. And and, and what he's, what we're required from him to, to walk in his righteousness. And that's the path that I want to stay on. Okay. What is or has God been telling you to do or get rid of that will bring you to the promised land or to a place of a new level in his glory? Because we go from glory to glory. We don't we get saved. We still have stuff that needs to go. But as you walk on that narrow path, the stuff falls off. You keep your eyes on him. Keep focused on Him. Just the presence of the Lord. Things have to go. They have to go. Because any spirit that isn't Holy Spirit can't stay in His presence. It'll fall off of you 
You, you abide in him, and he'll abide in you, and anything that is in the dark, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so, or maybe I already read that, but whatever's in the dark will be brought out into the light. It'll be exposed. It can't stay there anymore. So, um, remember this, because you're probably some, you know, there's always those there's always those people out there. There's always questions. Oh, how can we walk in a promised land? We live here on this world. There's there's evil all around us. Well, God already answered that question this morning. He he said, remember, in the promised land there were giants. This side of heaven, you will always be in a spiritual war. But the word of God says, admit to God, I'm sorry, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. All power and all authority has been given to you defeat to, to, to defeat the giants in the land. Yes, there are still giants in the land. Yes, you're still going to have adversity. Yes, you're still going to... Um, Deal with things that, you know, the devil the devil still prowls around looking to see who he can devour. But God, but God, keep his commandments, abide in him, he'll abide in you, and he will get you through the land where the giants are, but it's the promised land. So, it's an abundant place. It's, a, it's an abundant place. Okay? So, um, do you want to walk victoriously in the promised land? Mm -hmm. Here's the keys to the kingdom. If you want that, first I would speak to those who are in Egypt, those who are in sin, those who are in the world, those who have not even entered into relationship with Him. I would say to you, call upon His name. And you will be saved. You'll be saved by grace through faith. Choose to serve him. Say it with your words. Another one is believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repent. Now, I'm, well, this is for either saints and those who have just are just entering into relationship. Either one. Repent if you need to repent. Repent means turn away from your sin. Uh, you were once walking this way, now you're walking this way. Just turn away from your sin. It's that easy. I repent, Lord. That quickly you can be in right standing. That quickly you can be on the wide path that leads to death and be on the narrow path. That quickly. Okay? Uh, confess one to another and you will be healed. That was in the song that we heard. Ask God to search you. Ask Him to show you what needs to go. Sometimes we don't know. We don't know what we don't know yet. Ask Him to search you. He'll tell you. Ask Him to shine a light on what is hiding in the dark and expose it to the light to keep the temple holy. 